The Chargers were able to sign one of their biggest internal free agents with right tackle Trey Pipkins, and not only did they get him signed, but it seems like they got him on a relative bargain. You are Locked On Chargers, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Chargers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up and welcome into the Lockdown Chargers podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Wade, joined as always by my co-host, David Drogemeyer. And we've been covering the Chargers together now for seven seasons, but this is our fifth season as the host of the Lockdown Chargers podcast, bringing you your team every day. Thank you guys, as always, for making us your first listen today. And to make sure you never miss the show, go subscribe to the Lockdown Chargers YouTube channel and also follow the show for free on all platforms, wherever you get your podcasts from. And David, the Chargers have landed their big internal fish. Trey Pipkins is coming back to the Chargers on a three-year deal. Both of us were in favor of that. Both of us didn't want to see the world where that didn't happen, and the Chargers were once again trying to you know, fit the right pieces into the offensive line carousel. And the other part of it is, even though it is risky, I think there's a great chance that he can outplay what his contract is right now, especially compared to what some of the better right tackles are making. But in return for that move, there was another, and that was the release of Matt Filer, who was really good in year one, but really made all the sense in the world to move on because of the faith that the Chargers have in Jamari Sawyer. And, and knowing that he was going to find a way to start on this offensive line once Trey Pipkins was signed, that pretty much sealed the deal there. And we'll also talk about a kicker battle because we now know that Cameron Dicker will, at the very least, get a shot to keep his job as the most accurate rookie kicker in NFL history. So we're going to talk about that, even though Dustin Hopkins had been pretty great for the Chargers leading up to it. But David, Trey Pipkin, signed, sealed, delivered. This is something we wanted to get done. We think this is the right decision the Chargers made here. Definitely we do. I am super happy that the Chargers were able to get this deal done with Trey Pipkins. And I think it's just a great story, too. I mean, uh, you, you fa factor in a kid from a small school coming out of Sioux Falls, who, who by all accounts, when he was drafted, I was the first one to say, who the heck is this guy? Yeah. I have never heard anything about Trey Pipkins ever before in my life. <laughs> and the first couple of years uh, of his NFL career, um, it was kind of that pedigree. I mean, he, he did not perform very, very it well like at it, all. Yeah. yeah, it took took a lot of work, but it, it took him making the, the decision to really dedicate himself and to really commit to improving and owning his development. And when he did that, he came back, played phenomenally last year, and that perseverance and that ownership of, of his development is the reason why he is rewarded with this new contract. And I think we can all just, you know, give a double thumbs up to the Chargers getting to stop the right tackle carousel, right? We had to go through a lot of Joe Barstales and Trent Scott's and Sam Tevy's and Foster Sarrell's and yep, Storm, Storm Norton's, Norton's to yeah. get the guy that actually played, you know, the best right tackle season for the Chargers for a long, you know, in a long time. Last While season. being hurt. Yeah. And he was hurt. And that's, you know, I think, you know, part of the risk we'll get to because he was a little banged up last season. But I mean, total transformation to legitimate star player from someone who was absolutely unplayable at yeah. the beginning of his career. Showed flashes of it in 2021 when he got in for a couple of games. We were wondering, can he be trusted for a full season? The Chargers trusted him last year. He played through injury and now he gets rewarded. But I mean, 28 pressures allowed and 586 pass blocking snaps last year. That's above average right there. While going through his injuries, right, in the sprained MCL that kept him out of a few games, and also he just played through you know, enormous amounts of pain to stay on the field for the Chargers and was pretty good even with it, was even better when he was healthy. And, you know, had he stayed rested that for the right amount of time, I think we would have seen him pretty good for the whole season. But even when he was banged up, he played well. And I think when you look at this contract, David, I mean, as we see it right now, right, the only thing that's been reported from Adam Kaplan in the first report was from Lindsey Theory, who reported, you know, three-year deal with Trey Pipkins. But Adam Kaplan, the charge of re-signing Trey Pipkins for three years, $7.25 million per season. And David, I mean, I think when you saw some of the deals out there, it was a little scary, especially when you look at the top of that market, especially when you see someone like Andrew Wiley, you know, uh, probably an average to below average right tackle getting $8 million per season. Then you look at this, and I mean, it looks like a steal to me for sure. I love the value. I mean, you look at the the right tackle market and, and the top 10 players, you know, you got anywhere from $20 million 
um, all the way down to where Trip Hipkins is at, which is slating him just above Lael Collins for the 11th highest paid right tackle in the league at 7.250 million, just over Lael at 7 million. I love that value. And I, I think uh, you got to look at it from the player's perspective, too. I think he gets another opportunity if he overperforms during this contract where I think it's a good value for himself and a good value for the team, just considering, you know, the one year of premium production at that position. Yeah. If he performs very well in this contract, he has another opportunity before 30 to earn a much, much bigger contract. So I think I, I just love this for the team. I love this for the player. I think this is one of those rare situations where it's a perfect marriage. Yeah. Uh, and he probably earned more than that if you're just basing off how he played last season, sure. right? I mean, I think the charge still got him on a deal. But I think considering, you know, third round pick, like this is the third round pick that worked out for Tom Tulesco. Tom Tulesco has <laughs> barely re-signed any of his own draft picks except for the really, really good ones. And Trey Pipkins gets, you know, plays well enough to earn this contract. And it was great Would have to never, see ever expected it. Never. No, and, and it's a great point you make because I think another big part of this is the deal for the Chargers. You talked about the Trey Pipkin side of it. I mean, yeah. tackles now can play well into their 30s at a very oh, high absolutely. level, right? I mean, look yeah. at like guys like Andrew Whitworth who kept it around and helped the Rams win a Super Bowl at like 36 yeah. or 37, right? Yeah. At the same time, though, like on the Chargers side of this, based on how Tom Telesco has traditionally structured these contracts, it's probably really a two-year deal with a team option for that third season and no easy question. out after two, right? So, like, yeah. the Chargers, even with the risk, give themselves that ripcord more than likely, right, to get out of this if things aren't working out. And I think the other part of it, too, is for this guy specifically being able to, I mean, if he even plays at an above-average level, if he's pretty good, he's going to well outplay this contract and it's going to be, you know, pennies on the dollar for what some of these guys are going to get paid and what guys are going to continue to keep getting paid at the top of that position. If he's an above average right tackle, this is a heist, but a lot of that is based on, you know, I think the assumption that he's going to keep playing this way, right. That he's not going to turn into a pumpkin. Like we saw the first couple seasons. So like there is some risk here, right? I think the charge gave themselves a good out. But there is a reason the Chargers are getting him at this deal and because it is the risk that's attached to it. That's right. I mean, the risk is that out of four years that you had Trey Pipkins, you only had one year where you can really say that he was playing at a high enough level to justify this contract. So it's definitely a bit of a concern, right? And also the injuries is another factor in it. You got to hope that that MCL situation is cleared up and that's not going to affect him. And he stayed forward. pretty healthy, you know, and he has did. a backup, you know, the yeah. first three seasons, but and he's first young, season as right? a full starter. Yeah. Right. He's still young too. So you have to like his ability to be able to recover from that injury, get back to a hundred percent. And, you know, we've also you know seen videos of him uh, back working with Duke Manny, whether the O-line mastermind coach who, I mean, I think he has to credit a lot of his, his <laughs> recent success to was really kind of transformed who he is as a player. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that's definitely good to see that, you know, it's not, you know, signing a new contract and then doing the Joe, Joe Barksdale situation where things don't exactly uh, work out the way you want it to. But, yeah. you know, I think you look at this uh, with Trey Pipkins and I think it's it's a great situation for the Chargers to be in. You have that right tackle solidified. You have two tackles that you can really, I think, feel pretty darn good about. And it's been a long and I mean long time before the, since the Chargers have been able to say that. It has. I mean, it, it really has been a long time since you've had someone you feel really good about there, and he still has to prove it. And you are making the sure. assumption that not only is he going to stay healthy, but he's going to look like the better version of himself when he is healthy. But this is two seasons now, right? Incredibly right. small sample size in the first one of those two. And then last year over the full season, a little bit banged up. But like, he's been good the last couple of years. He's looked really, yep. really good. Won the starting right tackle job last season. And I mean, I think you have to be happy about this because what it does is it paves the way for the Chargers, not only to have their full line accounted for, right, which gives you more flexibility at the top of the draft now. You're not trying to figure that out. But it also gives you kind of a young up-and-coming line that Justin Herbert can grow with and that they can grow around all under contract and all relatively cheap for the most part outside of Corey Lindsley. But the one downside of this is the Chargers did have to release Matt Filer, which made a lot of sense. But he was really good, you know, in his first season with the Chargers. Didn't have a lot of help around him last year, right? Had some, you know, things he had to go through there. 
but it does lock up the starting job for Jamari Sawyer, and that is starting to come more into picture. So we're going to talk about this new offensive line being locked up and where these guys are going to fit in coming up after this. But I need to tell you guys about the official betting sponsor of the Lockdown Chargers podcast, and I'm talking about FanDuel. And right now, guys, the midway point of the NBA season is here, and it's the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, because right now new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. That means you're winning even when you're losing. So all you have to do is download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, super easy to use, and then you can bet on everything. You can bet on anything you want to. You can bet on anything from the money line to how many points a player is going to score, how many threes they're going to make, or you can even see if they're going to make two threes in the first three minutes of a game with the three by two by FanDuel. So many great things. I mean, it's March Madness right now. NBA playoffs are coming up. There's World Baseball Classic. So many great sports that are available right now. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine the best games, your biggest bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So don't miss out on your chance to get that no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. David, one of the moves that we most predicted would happen, regardless of the Trey Pipkin situation, but made a lot easier by the Trey Pipkin situation, was the Chargers ending up releasing their left guard, Matt Filer, who has been a stalwart for them as far as durability on the left side over the last two seasons, right? I wouldn't say it's a bad contract, but he was going to have an eight and a half million dollar cap hit this season. So once the Trey Pipkins move happened, it made all the sense in the world. But you can only make the move because you have so much faith in Jamari Sawyer. But I do think it's important to kind of realize, hey, you know, yes, he did have a down season. He was really, really good in 2021. So this kind of, you know, this signing kind of did what it needed to do for the Chargers. Yeah, it did. I mean, you bring in a guy who is, was an established veteran in this league that played in a you know very good organization, a very tough organization with the Pittsburgh Steelers, and you come you come over to the Chargers and kind of bring an attitude, and and that's that's something that the Chargers really needed. A guy that's just going to show up, get his job done, and and be a stable presence on the left side of that offensive line, and that's exactly what he was for the most part. His first year, he was great. He was a fantastic run blocker pairing with Rashawn Slater, a guy that was you know really mowing people over. I thought he was a, a solid pass protector. Uh, last year, definitely a bit of a down year for him. I mean, a lot of change, a lot of guys in and out of the lineup around him. Hard to kind of get that chemistry going, but I think we definitely saw a decline, especially early on in the season with run blocking. I, th I feel like he cured that a little bit towards the he end of the season. He started playing better. Yeah, he yeah. did. Um, I mean, I, I don't know if I think he was dealing with some injuries that we didn't really know about early on in the season. It seems, you know, like he was a different version of himself. But coming back to the business side of the NFL, this was a move that after the ink dried on the Trey Pipkins contract, that was pretty much a foregone conclusion for the Chargers to be able to do. They save uh, over six million dollars in cap space by making this cut. So it was just something that was going to happen. Yeah, and with how the Chargers usually structure the cap hit of the first season of the contracts they're giving out, I mean, there's a good chance that six and a half million they're saving is less than Trey Pipkins is going to make in 2023. So more than likely. I think you would absolutely trade that out. I mean, considering where both of those guys at at this point in their career. This is a yeah. great stat from Daniel Popper, though. Matt Filer missed only one game because of injury in two seasons with the Chargers. He played 2,309 of a possible 2,388 offensive snaps. Had a down year, but was pretty much always available. Definitely deserves a lot of credit for that. But at the same time, it was the right move from the Chargers yeah. because we already heard Brandon Staley say, it's hard for me to imagine an offensive line for the Chargers that doesn't have Jamari Sawyer starting on it, right? Now that's coming to fruition because part of the reason the Chargers are so comfortable releasing Matt Filer is because they have this dude who came in and was an absolute stud playing left tackle as a rookie protecting Justin Herbert and Jamari Sawyer. And David, now things are coming a little bit more into fruition right now. It seems like at this point, with this move with Matt Filer, with Trey Pipkins back at right tackle, he will not be staying at tackle and should slide in at left guard right next to Rashawn Slater. Yeah, and I think, you know, you look at this offensive line and all of a sudden – you have some continuity, and not just for this year, but for multiple years. And you have guys that can really grow together, that can really kind of establish that rhythm, that get that chemistry going. And it's a, a beautiful thing. You got a fantastic left tackle at you know with Rashawn Slater on the left side. Now you you bring in Jamari Sawyer, who was a guy you brought in to play guard um, that had you know had to really go out there and play tackle because of that Slater injury played phenomenally well, earned the respect and the confidence 
in the coaching staff to really make it a no brainer decision to be able to slate him into that starting offensive line. And now you have a young offensive line mixed with a little bit of veteran in the middle. I think it's just a great chemistry, a great kind of, uh, you know, cake there with all, all the ingredients that you need to be successful. I think as far as Jamari Sawyer goes, I have confidence that he can move back to guard. I think it may yes. be a something where, you know, maybe we're just assuming it and it's a very, very different position, especially at the NFL level with how athletic some of these big dudes are on the interior. Oh, yeah. I have faith that he can do it. He did it in college. That's what the Chargers originally drafted him to do. I don't think he'll have any problems there, but I also think it's not bad to have a guy who basically is a utility knife at this point, yeah. right? Like this dude is a Swiss army knife. Can If you need a tackle, say things don't work out with Trey Pipkins after this year, right? You have the opportunity to say, okay, well, let's see what Jamari Sawyer looks like over there, right? One of these yeah. two dudes goes down for an extended period like Rashawn Slater. It's a lot easier to find another guard than it is to find a quality tackle, but that's kind of what he brings to the table at this point is in a pinch, he can still play tackle. We've seen him do it, right? What so a valuable like, asset too, man. What a valuable <laughs> asset to have. Yeah, he's going to make like $600,000 or something next season. I mean, it doesn't make any sense at all. I mean, <laughs> it, it, the, the Chargers are getting extreme value out of that. But Oh, yeah. I do like what you were saying. I mean, I have all the confidence. I think he's going to be a very good guard, and I love the oh, thought yeah. of him and you know Rashawn Slater getting to grow together. I love the thought of Zion Johnson, Trey Pipkins getting to grow together, and having that all glued together by Corey Lindsley, the commander in chief, in the middle right there to yes. help these dudes for the next three seasons. Because that's the nice thing, David. These dudes now are all locked up through the twenty twenty three season. So these guys are twenty through the twenty twenty five season for yeah. the next three seasons. The Chargers yes. have these guys. Is what I meant to say. Yeah, and that is like chemistry is such a huge thing like it's been such a revolving door at so many of these positions like it was only a few years ago justin herbert's first season right who are the starters <laughs> we're talking about yeah. guys like trent scott dan feeney you know forrest lamp yeah like it, it's it, it's crazy that the chargers now have an offensive line and have an offensive line i think they should be feeling good about going into next season i mean it's, it's such a nice feeling just to be able to not <laughs> yeah. have to worry about oh who's going to be my left tackle Who's, who's going to be my right guard? Who's going to be my center? I don't know. I mean, we've had so many conversations throughout the years with the uncertainty of who is going to be starting for the Chargers on the offensive line that is almost uncomfortable. Like, how do you sit here and say, hey, we have everyone locked up in their positions where they're going to be, and we don't even have to worry about it. Now you're just worrying about the depth and, and worrying yeah. about protecting against injury. Cause Hey, obviously in the NFL that happens, but to be able to say, Hey, I have my five guys locked up. I have a really good mix of really good young talent with that leader, that commander in the middle. I think it's just an amazing feeling. It's going to be a great, great reason why the chargers have tremendous success. They finally have invested in the spine of their team on the offensive side and they can feel really, really good about those investments now starting to bear fruit. Yeah, you hope so. Right. I mean, the death is definitely going to be an issue. There's no one you really feel good about behind any of these guys right now. And I mean, that is a position that has a lot of injuries just as an entire offensive line. It's hard to keep the same five guys together for the whole season. You know, you need to definitely address the backup, but you can do that with later picks, right? Mm -hmm. You don't like it gives you more flexibility at the top of the draft now, which I love. Absolutely. And the other crazy thing is, David, I thought Tom Tulesco might go his entire career without drafting one good offensive lineman. I mean, that's what he did pretty much his first eight seasons, right? So we thought now there's four starting offensive linemen for the Chargers that the Chargers drafted. Like that is mind boggling to me. Four hits for Tom Tulesco, it looks like, assuming that Zion Johnson looks a lot better in year two, which I sure. think he will because of yeah, how hard that position is to kind of acclimate to. And why, you know, it might take Jamari Sawyer a second, too, because it is a different position at the NFL level. But I just have confidence in what these guys can do. And, I mean, what a great feeling. What a great job by the Chargers in investing in front of Justin Herbert and protecting their most valuable asset. I think they deserve a ton of credit for it. But there is going to be some questions about the depth of it, for sure. Maybe the Chargers took a step in addressing some of those needs because they did bring back Foster Sorrell, the right tackle, who played really bad last year but also got shoved into the fire as an undrafted rookie which is something no one should ever have to do, right? So we're going to talk about the Chargers tendering not only him, but also Dicker the kicker, which at the very least, David, means we have a kicker competition between Dustin Hopkins and Dicker the kicker. And I think Dicker's going to win, but at the same time, I mean, just to have him back, he was the most accurate kicker 
in NFL history as a rookie. He was the most accurate kicker in the NFL last season. How do you not keep that guy around? Well, the Chargers think the same thing, and it seems like they might have another young cheap contract to feel really good about and we're going to get into that but i do need to tell you guys that today's episode is also brought to you by ultimate football gm you've heard me talk about this mobile gaming app and if you guys ever thought you'd make a good gm you gotta give this game a try it's not as easy as you think to create a dynasty and it really isn't i mean ultimate football gm so many things you'd never think about that come you know as part of being a general manager they will put you through the ringer right sponsorships gear deals contracts players retiring players you know not wanting to play. I, I mean, so many, so many things happen trying to address things through injuries. And that's the craziest part of this. I mean, it's such a realistic and challenging game world that it's going to make you mad, but it's so addicting, so much fun. And when you play Ultimate Football GM, you get to hire the right coaches and coordinators, manage all the finances, including negotiating player salaries and terms, navigating your fr- franchise through free agencies and all the ups and downs of an NFL season. We all know as Charger fans how that goes. But not only that, guys, right now, our listeners can get a 100% free boost to their franchise when they use the promo code Locked On, all caps in the game store. That's Locked On in all caps at the game store. So make sure you guys go to ultimate-gm.com or look it up on the app stores. That's ultimate-gm.com, ultimate football GM. Start your dynasty today. Let's start here with Dicker the kicker, David. We'll get to the offensive line depth later, but Chargers have tendered Dicker the kicker. According to their official team website, they announced it on Tuesday that they were going to do it. And they also announced that they're going to tender their other exclusive rights free agent, Foster Sorrell. And it's, first of all, this is what an exclusive rights free agent is, right? With the restricted free agents like we were talking about, Braden Fajoko and Donna Parham, those guys automatically basically got $2.6 million cap hit if they were to get tendered, right, with the lowest tender. With the exclusive rights free agents, it's not that costly right this is what the rule is in the nfl any player with fewer than three accrued seasons and an expiring contract if his original team offers him a one-year contract at the league minimum the player cannot negotiate with other teams so both of these guys will be coming in on league minimum deals and i don't think there's really any downside especially when you're talking about cameron dicker dave and i think the main thing here is cameron dicker gets his shot to keep the job that he probably earned in 2022 he definitely earned it. I mean, you look at the numbers, it's, you know, historic. I mean, quite frankly, what, what he was able to do in his rookie season, 19 of 20. Uh, and and he got one from 48 yards. He only had one miss, and that was from 50 plus and perfect on extra points, 22 of 22 and several game winners to go along with it. So when he was in those situations where he had to make a kick and it was going to determine the game, he was able to come through. So I mean, a fantastic yeah, and those were just the numbers they had with the Chargers, too. I mean, he yeah. also had to factor in a couple of kicks he had with the Eagles where he made another kick, a game-winning kick for the Eagles, then came to the Chargers and made another game-winning kick for the Chargers, each in his first game with those teams. But yeah, overall, 21 out of 22, 95.4% on the season, David. I mean, how do you let that guy go? Like, You don't, and, and yeah. thankfully the Chargers did not. Um, obviously, when you have a, a veteran kicker that's signed to a multi-year deal, I mean, he's probably going to have some precedent, but you can't ignore that performance. I mean, you have an opportunity to have a young kicker that you can keep on and you can kind of grow with kind of along the same vein of the offensive line. You got this guy locked in and, and hopefully he can be your kicker of the future. But also on the other side of the coin, you're not supposed to lose your job when you get injured. Right. And so, yeah. it, it, I mean, you have to think about it from Dustin Hopkins situation, because before he got hurt, he was pretty darn good, too, Daniel. Yeah, for sure. Just going back to Cameron Dicker, though. I mean, I think the other thing is, I mean, you'd said, hey, the only kick he missed was 50 yards, right? But he actually came back and hit a 50 plus yard field goal in the playoff game against the Jaguars. He also missed a kick in that game, obviously, which, hey, you don't want to see your young kicker miss a kick in the biggest game of the season, right? But if you think about it, him and Dustin Hopkins both missed a big kick in each of the biggest games the Chargers have had last season. It happened to Dicker in the Jacksonville Jaguars game. It happened to Dustin Hopkins in the last Raiders game of the season, that crazy overtime game that should have been a tie and wasn't a tie. And, you know, the rest is history. But, I mean, if you have a chance to get a guy on league minimum, the thing is, is like, hey, if he had come in and went six for six on field goals, you have to probably keep Dustin Hopkins because he, you know, was good, good over a couple of seasons. But the hard thing for Dustin Hopkins is it's still a really small sample size with him as well. He only got to make, you know, take 10 kicks and he made Mm -hmm. nine of them. I mean, yeah. imagine a kicker losing his job not only after, you know, getting hurt, but also after making 90% of his. Like, I got an A on the season. test. Why am I why am I failing here? 
Yeah, I mean, he was the high <laughs> 80s his first season with the Chargers as well. I mean, 9 out of 10 in 2022, pretty good on PATs. Made a game-winning field goal while injured in the game against the Broncos, David. After made like that three or punt, four of those punt. kicks. My goodness. Yeah, no, <laughs> that was a, a crazy you game. Kicking but like, on one leg. And then that's the, the, the hard part of this is just that, you know, Well, I mean, maybe we'll see. Right. Because, I mean, at this point, I wouldn't necessarily say that just because they tendered Dicker means that they're automatically going to cut Dustin Hopkins right away. The most cap savings with Dustin Hopkins would be a post June 1st cut or cutting him later on would save them more money because he is under contract in 2024 as well. Yeah. yeah. But I think at the I think they will give Dustin Hopkins a shot at the job in this training camp. Like it looks most likely situation is probably a, a, you know, kicker battle. Which, I mean, I think is justified. I think that's warranted just based off of the performances of both of these guys. I don't think either one of them deserves to lose their job because they did what they were asked to do. At a Imagine extremely, having two good kickers after all the bad level. kickers. Yeah. I know. I mean, it's unbelievable. And But last year was like, no matter who they trotted out there to kick, they were successful for the Chargers, in, including T- Taylor Bertolette. So, I mean, yeah. they had a lot of special team success last year and that was definitely part of it but yeah i mean i i I agree with that i think we're going to see a kicker battle and honestly i think that's the way it should be it's not tristan viscaino right Uh, taylor bertolette one of the only kickers that was more accurate than uh camera dicker last year but it's because he had less than three kicks attempted so yeah out of anyone that attempted at least three kicks camera dicker's 95.4 percent was the highest in the nfl as a rookie most the highest percentage in you know rookie nfl history so like you can't be better than he was. Literally, you can only be one field goal better. Nobody Historically, makes them all. Historically, yeah. 21 out of 22 for the season last year, not even playing the whole season, is pretty historically good. Did not wow. miss a point after. It's crazy, I and mean, he deserves a shot. We'll I'm sure see he's not goes. worried or upset about missing that Carrie Underwood concert. <laughs> yeah, exactly. For those who don't know the story, he was at a Carrie Underwood concert when he got the call that the Chargers were going to bring him in. Awesome. Awesome story. Awesome kid. Awesome gap in the tooth. Awesome name, right? <laughs> Dicker the kicker is who you want. Forever. It's amazing. If you could be the Chargers history, or Chargers kicker forever, you know, in the next 10 season, I hope it happens because you, Dicker the kicker. Like that's, that's always going to be a good call. It doesn't get better than that. Yeah. No, I hope it works out because it's such a, such a fun name. Let's get to the Foster Sorrell part of this, David. Obviously Foster Sorrell last year, 18 pressures allowed, filling in at right tackle for Trey Pipkins when he was injured. 186 pass blocking snaps with 18 pressures, six hits, two sacks allowed. Wasn't great in the running game either. But there's no downside to it either, right? Like, that's the other thing is the the Chargers don't have bodies. Like, there's going to need to be some bodies. And obviously, the Chargers felt good enough to crazily start him in a game last season, right? And put him in for meaningful snaps without going outside. They felt better about him than they did. He, I mean, he passed Storm Norton in the lineup, right? I mean, they just straight went to Foster Sorrell at a certain point after Trey Pipkins, even though Storm Norton was supposed to be that guy, the swing tackle guy, right? Yeah. I I mean, David, I think this is more of just a reflection of where the Chargers' depth as it, you know, is at right now, and, and yeah. I think just shows you, hey, there's nothing bad about this. Maybe he can improve. Like I said, he got thrown in the fire as an undrafted free agent rookie. That's not a spot you want, you know, somebody playing right tackle and protecting – you know, Justin Herbert, like it, it, you got put in an unfair spot, still a chance he improves, but nothing I think you can feel great about at the moment. No, definitely not. I mean, when, when he was out there, it definitely was noticeable that he was playing probably above his competition level at that point in time. I mean, hey, it, it, that's a really tough situation to be put in. I mean, that's literally out of the frying pan and into the fire immediately. And, yeah. And, you know, hey, that's the NFL. But at least now he has some experience. You know, you, you, he has, you know, on field experience to be able to draw back on and be able also understand what he needs to get better at. We did see him also in that video with Trey Pipkins and Rashawn Slater at the Duke Manyweather cap camp. So, hey, maybe he can put the work in. He can get better. We have seen it with other players. So, I mean, it's uh, it's up to him. But, hey, having a swing swing tackle potentially on a $750,000 contract, a league minimum deal, I mean, there's absolutely no downside. Bring him in, see what he can do. At the end, at the very least, you know, he just gets cut, and, you know, that's the end of it. But, yeah, that's yeah. very little downside to this move. No, I mean, it doesn't mean they are done there, right? I mean, the Chargers still have to address the swing tackle position. Sure. There has to be some competition there that's Absolutely. not Storm Norton, right? Like, and, and at the guard positions as well. Right now, it's pretty much only Brandon Hymas. So as far as Foster Swell goes, and what you're talking about with the Duke Manyweather people also, for people who don't know, 
Duke Manyweather worked with Rashawn Slater, you know, and get some credit for just Rashawn Slater being the freak he was even going into his rookie season. The yeah. last couple of years, Trey Pipkins has been training with him and has obviously looked a lot better. And now it has been seen that it was floating around on Twitter. A fan posted, you know, some of the clips from Duke Manyweather's Instagram stories that showed that Foster Sorrell was also there working out with those two dudes. So, hey, maybe he can make some magic happen. Duke many weather four Chargers offensive line coach 2024. How about that? I mean, that's, <laughs> you know, something I can get behind for sure. It seems like he's working some magic out there and really knows what he's doing. A lot of credit to him he's and a, a lot of credit for these guys for not having the ego to go and try and work on their craft and get better because these dudes deserve yep. a ton of credit for the work they're putting in. Love Duke many weather, but Trey Pipkins had to go put the work in. Right. And he Absolutely. did. So did Rashawn Slater. And yes. so does Foster Sorrell. If he wants to get to a point where, he can be, you know, relied upon to enter an NFL game without being a complete liability, which is what he was last yeah. season. But that is going to wrap things up for today's show. We will be back with you guys the rest of the week, though, as this news keeps unfolding. If Chargers are signing other places, the Chargers bring anyone else in. We will be here, as always, to talk about it with you guys to make sure you don't miss it. Go subscribe to the Locked On Chargers YouTube channel and also follow the show for free on all platforms wherever you get your podcasts from. You can also find the show every day on all of our social media. You can find us on Twitter at LockedOnLAC. You can find me on Twitter at Dan Talk Sports and David Drogmeyer's DMs are always open at Drotalk SD on Twitter. You can also find us at Locked On Chargers on Instagram and on our Locked On Chargers Facebook page. We might do a fan mail Friday this week. We're not sure yet. It's kind of kind of depend on how you know where the week goes. But as always, if you guys have a question, 30 second question about the Chargers, you can call into the voicemail line at 323-524-7924 and get it on the next Chargers mail back or fan mail show. We always appreciate hearing from you guys on there. It brings a little we don't get to take callers. It's a podcast. It makes it a lot funner for us when we get to, you know, have you guys and get your opinions put on the show. But thank you as always for making us your first lesson. If you need a second listen, make sure to check out the Locked On NFL Draft Show with Keith Sanchez and Damian Parsons, where they're the best draft insight out there. I listen to them all the time. They're gonna help you find the next sleeper, the next hidden gem in this upcoming draft. And you can find them like us wherever you get your podcasts from and on YouTube. But Make sure you are back here tomorrow because the news has been coming fast and frequently with the Chargers. But until then, take it easy and go Bolts.